next hour, stay tuned to explore the amazing phenomenon of crop circles. Are these evidence that aliens are visiting Earth? No one has been able to solve this startling mystery. Then, relive the story of Trevor Ford and the ghosts of lost World War II airmen. And finally, a close encounter. A UFO experience that scientists and government officials admit is real. Isn't that Calvin? Mm, I haven't seen him for a while. Wonder where he's hit. I heard he got a job. Ooh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's about time he got himself together. Hmm. Now that you mention it, there is something different about him. Well, just go to show you can't judge a book by its cover now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks like responsibility has been good for him. Well, I'm just glad somebody believed in him enough to give him a chance. Mm, wonder where he's working. Welcome to McDonald's. May I help you? You ever notice you can't really smell your own breath? Hi, Tim. Whoa. Problem, Tim? Whoa. You can smell other people's breath. Whoa. Whoa. But not your own, even though it's right under your nose. Whoa. So you search for fresh, clean breath or face the consequences. Hey, guys. Oh. Want fresh, clean breath? Get the only mint with Redson and be certain with certs. I created the Hat Squad because I wanted to do a show about three foster brothers who are police officers who have come from tragedy. These are guys that uh, were victims of violent crimes themselves. Their own parents have been murdered. The Hats are a signature for this unit because they believe that they can recreate that time when maybe justice in America was a little bit easier to understand than it is today. You know, if the Hat Squad is after you, people know they better get out of town. The Hat Squad, Wednesdays this fall on CBS. What created this? We don't know. The creator, you could call God. You could call it E.T. Uh, we don't know. We have no idea who or what the creator is. But there's something very special going on. This cannot be created by nature as we understand nature to be. My name is Colin Andrews, this is my story, and it's real. Meet Colin Andrews. Until recently, he was a senior officer and chief electrical engineer in West Hampshire. He had up to 400 people responsible to him in his job capacity. But something of such enormity happened that he quit his job and is risking everything to pursue phenomenal events that are unfolding. Events that may affect all of us someday. It all began for Colin in 1983, when he was on his way to a business meeting. These markings immediately struck me as being not only symmetrical, but extremely unusual. I'd never seen anything like it before. I think many people would see these markings as sheer artistry. It's like a cosmic finger drawing pictures in the canvases of southern England. In 1976, farmers began discovering simple circular formations. Less than 10 that year. In 1978, a quintuplet set was discovered, five circles forming a cross. From that time, the complexities of the circles began to evolve. And then in 1990, a new and staggering development appeared. Straight lines. Nature never creates a straight line. Everything here depicts behavior. It depicts intelligence. And that means that there may well be a message. It is that message which we need to know.
This phenomenon is not happening in southern England alone. There have been reports of these pictograms in the snow in Scotland, fields of France, Switzerland, and Germany, the ice fields of Russia, crops in Australia, and numerous sightings of the fields of Japan and Canada. In the U.S. alone, there were 20 reported cases this past year. The media took notice and the world began to pay attention. Observers from the public, the science community, and even the military increased. Crop circle watching practically became a spectator sport. Still, there were no answers. Not even any clues. Skeptics believed it was a hoax. And when a couple of enterprising gentlemen came forward, the mystery appeared to be solved. These men never claimed responsibility for doing these complex pictograms, only the simple circles. Their crude attempts didn't even come close to the beauty and complexity of the mysterious crop circles. Their fame was short-lived, as the reasons for their actions soon became apparent. Money. Because in England we have a, a reward on offer, in American terms, of $25,000 if you can solved the problem of the crop circles. Uh, that was the second one this year. We had uh, some in July claiming that they knew how it was done. So they weren't the only ones, but they just seemed to have a bit more publicity. As far as I'm concerned, there is no way they could have done it. The dimensions, the uh, densities, and the complexity of these circles are evolving and increasing dramatically. We have now just last year, we had reports in excess of 500 between May and September. This year already, we have 250 independent sites, and that probably, when we finish putting them into the computer, will exceed 1,500 actual events. And on average, they are arriving here now between two and five major agroglyphs each day. It would take an army of people to construct them. My husband's family have farmed here for 103 years. And last year, we experienced our first taste of the crop circles quite early in the morning. And we saw it below the road in the fields. We had binoculars with us, went up on the hills and looked down on it and realized that this was something pretty incredible. I can't tell you what they are. I, I can't even tell you what I think they are. I, I can tell you what I know they're not. I know they're not made by people. These people know their land. They work their land. They know every square inch. They know their crops. They know their weather conditions. They, each one has told me, absolutely no way can this be caused by a weather condition such as whirlwinds or fertilizer burns or anything like that. They've seen it all. It's not possible. A lot, most of these fields have been in the families for several generations. Um, they know it, they're not hoaxes because of, uh, because of the fact that you can't get into the field without leaving a path. As we walked through one of these pictograms in southern England, it became apparent there is presently no man or machine on earth that could do this. These crops are not broken. They are bent, woven, and layered. The layer on top is whirling in a counterclockwise direction, whereas the layer underneath goes the opposite way. The sheer intricacy of the patterns points to a form of delicately controlled energy. What type of energy, no one knows. But there are astonishing residual effects left in the circles. During a beautiful summer's day in 1987, I traveled to a place called Wantage in Oxfordshire to have a look closely at a circle surrounded by one uh, concentric ring and out of that ring came a small pathway pushing into the standing crop at the end of which was a small area a small depression uh, a cup shaped perfectly cup shaped depression out of which the soil had been removed and uh, was nowhere to be seen i removed from the bottom of the depression a soil sample and a small stone I put this in a plastic bag and removed it. I took it back to my home in Andover and I locked it in a room which was very well secured by three independent intruder alarm systems, one of which I designed myself and have a British paint for.
That morning at 4.15, one of his three sophisticated alarms went off. And every morning for two weeks, his alarms were triggered by something at 4.15 a.m. Outside scientists were brought in, but his alarm systems checked out. There were no signs of forced entry. Nothing was ever disturbed except that the infrared sensors in the system had detected a strange heat source moving across them. The day the soil sample was removed from the house, the alarms mysteriously stopped. We are asking now science to address this energy. What is it? Because up to now, it hasn't existed as far as they're concerned. We know it exists. And science now knows it exists. At a lab near Detroit, Michigan, samples obtained from the crop circles are being tested for any biophysical changes and compared with samples taken from the fields outside the circles by biophysicist Dr. Levengood. Looked absolutely normal. They were filled out and I fully expected to find a normal seed inside. But uh, I was uh, very surprised to uh, note that instead of the normal seed, there was a condition that's known as polyembryony. Further examination showed the seeds from the circles had been genetically altered. Normally, each seed contains one embryo. These contain multiple embryos. A very unusual condition. Positioning of this black substance clearly indicates that the uh, whatever caused this was something coming from up above in the atmosphere and not from below. This is some of the glooms or little husks that were below the outside of, of a particular wheat kernel, and even they show this burning right at their tips. And this would indicate, because of this very localized charring, that this had to be a very rapid process. Dr. Levengood's research has concluded that the energy creating crop circles is similar to microwave energy. There is evidence of charring and burning, but even more startling are the genetic alterations being found in the seeds. Recently, there have been numerous reports of bright flashes or glowing lights exactly in the areas where circles are discovered the next day. This fuels other forms of speculation. In regards to it being extraterrestrial UFO involvement, we haven't ruled that out. It still could be a high chance. My opinion that um, this happened before, how it's done, we don't know. We have never yet seen a UFO hovering above a corn circle. We have had lights in the sky in the area of a crop circle, but we haven't connected the two yet. Give it time. Following a report from two men uh, driving their car south of Swindon on this, the night this particular formation occurred, they reported seeing a large bright orange flash of light near Roughton Airfield where this formation occurred followed by a veil, a beam of light from above, the edges of which were rippling. On impact with the ground, a golden ball developed. The veil of light from above diminished, and the golden ball remained at ground level for a short time when it, too, faded away into the darkness. The whole experience, the whole event, was repeated uh, a few seconds later. This formation was discovered early the next morning at the point of impact with the golden ball. A man had come over the hill in the night, this was, and he was the only car to be seen. His car was the only one to be seen, and he went straight by, and the next morning he returned to the spot where I was still doing some work on this particular formation that had formed that night. And he came up visibly, physically um, agitated, and he said, where's the circle, where's the circle? And then he said, there it is, there it is, I've got it. And I said to him, I was up here during the night. And uh, he then said, I saw a dome of light over this area when I came home last night at two o'clock. And he was too frightened to stop. Finally, we obtained a British military film that captured this amazing phenomenon. In spite of expensive surveillance operations utilizing low-light cameras, infrared cameras, microwave detectors, 
specialized listening devices, and security equipment to eliminate human beings, these markings still arrived instantaneously without witnesses or clues. With the return of juvenescent academic pursuit come certain fundamental guidelines requiring strict adherence. First, this. Jam and jeans. Major deals. Bodacious jeans. Fresh teas. Chillin' turtles. The back to school sale at J.C. Penney. Achieve a higher level of cool. July 1992. Oldsmobile goes further than any other car company to redefine quality. Further than the lab. Further than the test track, the Oldsmobile Achieva went 100,000 miles against Honda Accord and Toyota Camry in a real-world test. Independent test results prove Achieva outperformed Accord and Camry in total cost, which includes maintenance, repair, and operating costs. Achieva, quality redefined. From the company that went far enough to prove it. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. At universities like this, Clinical studies prove there's a way to lose weight simply and effectively without caffeine or caffeine nervousness. It's Dexatrim. Dexatrim helps you control your appetite so you can lose weight without feeling hungry. And no other weight loss product has more published medical studies to show that it works. In fact, studies prove that four out of five people lost weight with Dexatrim. Now that's powerful proof. Dexatrim, medically proven to help you lose weight. This fall, John Ritter's giving Marky Post a job. Uh, what have you been doing for the last six months? Uh, I served as cultural liaison in Paris. I don't know what that means. If you must know, I worked at Euro Disney. From the creator of Designing Women and Evening Shade. Doing what? Helping people. Helping people what? Helping people on and off the teacup ride. Is that all right with you? Are you happy now? Hearts of Fire, Mondays this fall on CBS. I like that ride. Did he kill his wife and infant son? We've got a shooting. The truth behind the controversial Charles Stewart murders. Good night, sweet wife. Sunday. Starve for a good laugh. It's lunchtime. Hungry for some ha ha? Cheese log, anyone? Then check out the culinary comedy of Evening Shade and Major Dad. Fifty dollars, what's in that bag? Oh, seventy-five. So delicious, you'll keep coming back for more. Is that fast enough for you? Evening Shade and Major Dad serving up the laughs Monday. Next time, more sparkle. AIDS is a preventable infectious disease. Find out the basic facts by calling the National AIDS Hotline at 1-800-342-AIDS. We are working with uh, nuclear physicists in America, uh, with plasma vortex experts in Great Britain, meteorologists, biologists, plant experts, soil experts, astronomers, Nobody but nobody at the moment can give us that breakthrough which we are looking for. I've met people from all over the world, scientists, all trying to solve this mystery. My home life is non-existent really, because I spend so much time and money trying to find the answer to the question I asked in 85. What is going on? Where is it all leading us to? I'm putting my cards on the table because I believe that is where we have arrived. There's nothing left in the material world. We aren't going to find the answers in the material world. We're going to find it by opening up our minds. I think this is something here which will get, lead us into the 21st century. This is the leader, if you like, now, because it's something physical, something we can, everybody can see. They can't now say that the circles themselves do not exist. Even if we find out what the energy is that creates these uh, circles, I doubt if we'll ever find out what's behind them because surely something is manipulating this energy to draw, like an artist would, configurations and patterns in the wheat fields. Something or someone wants to get our attention. Why, I don't know, but I hope someday to find out. We do have here markings which smack of language. The whole phenomenon is beginning to smack of communication. And that could well be the biggest thing ever experienced on our planet. We are nowhere near solving this mystery, 
but we are asking hundreds of questions. Have our orbiting satellites and space probes reached another civilization? Are these attempts by an alien culture to reply? Or are these messages from within? People of the ancient Hopi cultures become very emotional when they see these pictograms and insist they have meaning. They say Mother, that's the Earth, is in serious trouble and she is crying out for help. One of the most recent complex pictograms startled observers with its resemblance to a Mandelbrot set. The application of a simple mathematical formula designed to quantify the theory of chaos. The implications are frightening. Whatever they are, wherever they came from, and how they are formed remains a mystery. Colin Andrews and many like him will not rest until the key is found to unlock this secret. I am absolutely determined uh, to communicate this uh, to the people around the world because it is bigger than any one person. This is bigger than all of us. We must understand what is happening here to our planet. The existence of life after death and proof of UFOs when we continue. What if you dipped the cream of ice creams into chocolate that's as smooth as silk? The Dove Bar, a pure silk chocolate ice cream. For years, I've been eating this healthy, boring stuff because of... Eating healthy, Stephanie? The voice. Well, I've had it. I want taste, indulgence. Kellogg's Frosted Mini Wheats. But, Steph, Frosted Mini Wheats are good for you. Pay no attention. There's whole grain wheat. There's frosting. No salt, and they're fat-free. See? No. I don't see. Kellogg's Frosted Mini Wheats. Surprise! They're good for you. Ignore the voice. Enjoy the frosting. The days have been counted, and summer is one day shorter this year. So while you can, relax with a pitcher of Country Time Lemonade, and take time for summer's pleasures. Shares engaged to Danny Aiello. Do you love him, Loretta? No. Good. But she's sleeping with Nicolas Cage. You love him, Loretta? Ma, I love him awful. That's too bad. The fact that they're brothers could be a problem. What? Your life's going down the toilet. Moonstruck, next. How to find out whether you're entitled to some of the money airlines are paying back to passengers who pay too much. Monday on CBS This Morning. This is CBS. The trainers of all major pro sports recommend one pain-relieving gel, Flexol. It works for my kind of pain and yours. From muscle strain to tendonitis, bursitis, or stiffness, aloe vera-based Flexol, the pain relief pro trainers recommend. Norwich Aspirin. There's 80 years of aspirin know-how in every bottle. Compare it to Bayer. Norwich is just as effective, works just as fast. Here's the big difference. You get more than twice as much for your money with Norwich Aspirin. Beaver Creek Resort, Colorado's Alpine Resort Hideaway. Serene and lovely, the 70-degree days and clear skies beckon the whole family to recreation and relaxation. How easily they blend into one at Beaver Creek Resort. Three-night summer packages start at $99 per person. For information or to make reservations, call 1-800-622-3131. Gulf War pen pals end up tying the wedding knot at 11. The Battle of Britain shaped the beliefs of many a fine British lad. And Trevor Ford, a commander in the Royal Air Force, was no different in that respect. My name is Trevor Ford. This is my story, and it's real. Now my story really begins when Hitler had taken over Europe. He had started, as you probably know, 
imprisoning the Jewish population, his own population. He was gassing them and he was burning them. Now my thoughts and eventually those of my crew were that those people were praying and praying for help, assistance, and they prayed and they prayed and nothing happened. Trevor Ford reached the rank of Warren Commander. He was a leader who had developed a mutual respect and strong bond with his men. I quit, Skip. You do nothing but win. Well, good of you to concede defeat, Ray. Because I've just won all your cigarette money for the next 12 years. <laughs> hey, you like think you can do better? Ah, easy, Ray. Hey, where are you going? For a walk. Well, you can't. Why not? Oh, Ray, because uh, we're on alert right now. And not only that, I think you could do with some cheering up. Well, I think you've cheered me up enough for one night, thanks. <laughs> hey, now, lads. Ready. Happy birthday, Ray. <laughs> hey, that I owe you? It's scratched, all right? All right. All right. <laughs> it's my cake. I'll cut it. Hey, uh, Ray, before you do, well, me and the lads want you to know that we made this cake from our own heart and soul. So, uh, <laughs> take your chances. <laughs> <laughs> Ray. Many of Trevor's best friends died in air battles over Europe and he never stopped missing any of them, especially Ray. Seeing the horrors visited upon innocent people, Trevor came to the conclusion that there was no God watching, no heaven or hell or afterlife. Trevor's wife was a WAF at the time, which is the Women's Royal Air Force of today. Hey, I'm gonna have to do something about that back pain of yours, Trevor. It comes with age. Nonsense. It comes with neglect. Awesome. Here we are. I could use those biscuits. Now, now I'll just get behind the gun. Uh, Eat. how are you? Fine, thank you. Well, have you been taken care of? Yes, your daughter's helping me. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, Trevor, I see your back still acting up. I guess everybody knows. Why don't you come to the healing sessions at the church? I suppose God does the healing, hmm? finds a time in his busy schedule. Of course he does. Don't get him started, Edith. Trevor thinks God ignored a lot of people who needed his help during the war. We don't know how the world turns as it does. Well, I certainly don't. His wife, Cynthia, finally did convince Trevor to go to a healing service to see if he could get relief for his back pain. Quite frankly, I'd rather have my teeth drilled. Trevor, you promised. Oh, I know I did, but the, the whole thing's so silly. Come along, we're going to be late. All right. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> what was about to happen would change Trevor's life forever. My description of what I do and how it is done is that I have one foot on the earth plane and one foot in the spirit world so i am an in-between your father says not to worry everything will be resolved in a fortnight be patient good news is coming in spirit here who insists that you haven't got your squadron tie on. For me? Yes. She's right, it's my RAF tie. He has several fellows with him. There's a tall fellow here with curly blonde hair and there are nine more in the balcony including a small man they all call the little bloke. <laughs> They're laughing about the little bloke 
They say he's a real grumbler and always has something to moan about. But they're very fond of him. They claim to know you. Does that mean anything to you? I, uh, I lost ten good friends in the war. They all have the same insignia on the shoulders of their uniform. It's an eagle in flight with its talons extended. She's right. The, the 36 squadron, my squadron, is unbelievable. The blonde fellow says the little bloke is an air gunner. He has a different insignia on his chest. It's a half wing and a crown and bold letters A G surrounded by a brown leaf cluster. I'm hearing airplanes. They sound different, unlike the ones at the airport. Prop plane? Yes, that's right. Prop planes. That's what we flew. That's what we flew. I can't hear. The blonde fellow says it's a fly past. Do you know what that is? Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't know what to think. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Pleasure. Not at all. Not at all. Thank you. Oh, wait. You mustn't go yet. What? What? Please stay. Stay? What for? The airmen haven't gone. They're lined up on the stairs. What do they want? Filing up now and saluting you. And the little bloke is still here. He wants your attention. He wants to make sure that you recognize him. And the last one to leave came back and said, Goodbye, Skip. And I knew I hadn't been called that for 45 years. And I knew that was Ray. We came back to my house and looked at my photographs. That's me. Oh, yes. And that's the little bloke I saw, whom you called Ray. She's right. That's him. That's Ray. Um, my understanding of what it is like when you pass from this phase of existence to the other phase of existence, which is generally known as the spirit world, um, is to those who understand the continuation of life, is just like walking through a door. Because all you do is shed your earthly body as an old overcoat that you no longer need and the real you that no longer needs the physical body goes on to another vibration to live in another phase of existence where a physical body is no longer needed but the personality the person as they are still exists as they are I was absolutely stunned, elated, couldn't really believe what I'd heard, but I knew it to be true. So, from being 
but would normally be a confirmed atheist. The circle had turned that I knew now that somebody who'd gone on could come back from beyond and be with me and my family. Which means, of course, there is life after death. This experience changed Trevor's beliefs and attitudes about life and life after death. Even his back condition improved. Peggy Goodwin introduced him to visitors from the unknown. And Trevor discovered peace of mind he had never known before. Visitors from the unknown will continue with proof of UFOs. I clocked you doing seven. We've got to get the color dial store white summer clearance up to 50% off all over the store. Final tile, half price. Ceramic tile, half price. Mini blinds, buy one, get three free. Wall covering, two ninety nine. dollars 99 stain master carpet, up to 50% off. All wood floors, up to 50% off. Hurry. Up to 50% off ceramic tile. Final floors. And stain master carpet. It's color tile store wide summer, summer clearance. clearance. Coast to coast. You save the most. Up to 50%. Sale ends Monday. Basically, I thought all toothpaste were the same. But then on a visit to my grandmother's, I tried her Arm & Hammer dental care. And wow, it was a special feeling, like a burst of clean. My mouth felt so clean and so healthy that it was just like leaving the dentist's office. Then I heard that more dentists recommend Arm & Hammer than any other baking soda toothpaste. I see my dentist really often, but now I get that fresh from the dentist feeling every single time I brush. Get Arm & Hammer dental care for that healthy, fresh from the dentist feeling of clean. Yep, I'm part of the management team now, Mama. Oh, baby, I'm so proud of you. It's only afternoons. But still, it's a promotion. I gotta get back to work. Guess what, Anna? Calvin is the new manager at McDonald's. Straight up? <laughs> Cal's been on it at Mickey D's, so they gave him his properties. He owns a McDonald's and just got his property. For real? Calvin? Calvin, they used to hang out on the corner? So you own McDonald's. No, not yet. Surprise! Do you have trouble knowing what you want? You do realize we're never going to hitchhike across Europe again. Why would we want to hitchhike? we got credit cards. Are you afraid to try new experiences? Your duck sausage, buffalo mozzarella, and sun-dried tomato pizza. That thing's a pizza? Is stress taking over your life? I have been popping Valium like Pez. If I get any calmer, they're going to have to put me in a body bag. These are the Middle Ages. Premieres Thursday, September 3rd. Couples capture the Masters, Kite, the U.S. Open, Faldo, the British Open. Now the year's final major, the PGA Championship, late night tonight on CBS. Phil Banks didn't just die. Somebody killed him. Well, let's not panic. We've had murders before. But they always come with confessions. We may actually have to solve this. Fridays this fall on CBS. Find out what's behind picket fences. Meet Jean-Jacques Velasco, a recognized scholar in the study of optics and an engineer at the prestigious National Center for Space Research, which is the equivalent of NASA in the United States. He is in charge of SEPRA, the organization which investigates atmospheric phenomena and UFOs for the French government. These only have eyewitness accounts. They have no other corroboration. May I ask you a question? Of course. Do you believe any of this? No. But we've had uh, hundreds of reported sightings. All atmospheric phenomena explained by natural causes. So why do we continue? If we are to be taken seriously, our efforts must use rigorous scientific methods, even if we never come up with anything. So all this could be an exercise in futility? Yes, that's right. Velasco, a scientist who needs hard evidence to be convinced, had seen nothing to confirm the existence of UFOs. In the countryside of Trans-en-Provence, Renato Nicolai was about to have an experience 
that would give Velasco the evidence he was waiting for. That day, it was about five o'clock in the evening. I was working in the fields when I saw a strange object. I tried to get closer. I was about 30 meters from it when I saw it. Only when it took off, 30 or 40 seconds later, could I really notice its shape and form. Renato brought his neighbors to the site. Naturally, they were skeptical. I know what I saw. What did do that? We should call the police. He thought he should call the police. You should, Renata. was it? It's no big. Maybe three meters across, one and a half meters high. I see. Have you ever seen anything like this before, sir? Never. And you are uh, perhaps interested in UFO? Ma, what, are you crazy? Ma, what, it just landed, it killed my onions, and it left. So I call you, that's all, okay? Of course. Thank you, sir. Mm. Well, the witness appears legitimate. Look at the ground. Yes. After we have taken our samples, no one touches anything until the government space research team gets here. Let's remove all the variables. I want a psychological examination of the witness and the team to investigate the possibility of a hoax. Uh, yes, sir. We sent the soil samples to the lab at the University of Toulouse. Now, what about the lab at Port? They got the samples yesterday. Oh, and the good news, we have the same team who worked on the lunar samples examining them. Good. What about vegetation samples? We sent those uh, and some soil samples to the National Institute for Agricultural Research. Who's handling it? Michel Bunyas. Very good. Get him on the phone. Meet Michel Bunyas. He holds advanced degrees in engineering, biochemistry, and statistics. He is a director of research and a university professor. He has contributed to an estimated 200 scientific articles in over 50 international journals. He has written four books and received numerous honors and awards, including laureates from the Academy of Sciences and the Biological Society. And Michel Bunyas, if you play. Monsieur Bunyas. Hello, Michel. This is Jean-Jacques Velasco. Ah, comment ça va? Ça va bien. What have you got? Well, I'm getting some unusual results. I want to investigate this further. I'll go down there myself tomorrow to take some samples. Come see me when you are finished. Yes, of course. Au revoir. Professor Bunyas and his assistants flew to Transon Provence to obtain soil and plant samples. It is probably the first time that uh, after a very well characterized event concerning a UFO. There was a full scientific study showing that some changes 
were brought to uh, the plants near the place where the UFO landed, and that these biochemical changes were decreasing with increasing distances from the trace, so that all the findings, the biochemical findings, could be put into equations and be mathematically characterized in a very accurate way. Then these findings were compared with the same result obtained several years later, so that these controls led us to, to realize that on the same area, two years after the event, all the findings, all the things were uh, uh, recovering a, a normal shape, a normal pattern of uh, biochemical characteristics. Following procedure, a psychologist was sent to interview Renato Nicolai to determine if he was a reliable witness. And we say, let's get far. Nikolai, as always, was extremely honest and very down to earth. No, none. He just saw what he saw. He doesn't appear to be the kind of man who would make something like this up. You have no doubt? Oh, in my professional opinion, none whatsoever. He seems quite uh, unaffected by any of it. I was just a bit annoyed at all the attention. <laughs> Thank you very much, Doctor. Alasco continued to coordinate the research. The lab at Toulouse was used, as well as the one at the Institute for the National Research of Agriculture. In all, it was an exhaustive scientific undertaking, both in the lab and in the field. Alasco realized from the evidence obtained from Bunyas that this case was extraordinary and could not be dismissed as a hoax. He continued to examine all possibilities. Bunyas had checked with the military and had been assured that no military prototypes had been in the area. With an electromagnetic force. Is there any chance of a hoax? Could someone duplicate the effect by other means? No one knew what soil samples I would take, what tests I would run. There were no samples of herbicide in the soil, no traces of anything man-made. If someone wanted to create this, they would need more years of study than you and I have together. And they'd also have to have a greater knowledge of toxic compounds than exist anywhere. Still not sure, are you? <laughs> I'm a scientist. The lab results were astounding. Based on the way the ground was impacted, whatever had landed that day in Renato's garden weighed three and a half to five tons and had heated the soil to an extreme temperature of 1100 to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's now possible to say that in time, and in distance, all the biochemical uh, findings are consistent with the description given by the witness. And it is probably the first time in the world, to my knowledge, that such a complete set of data has been obtained on such uh, cases of UFO uh, landing. In effect, uh, in effect we were in the presence of an unidentified phenomenon which had been witnessed and that had left traces in the soil and surrounding environment. In conclusion, after the case in Transant Provence, one cannot have the same perception about the UFO phenomenon, for one can no longer debate whether or not it exists. One cannot say, do you believe in UFOs or don't you believe in UFOs? For now we are aware of phenomena which we cannot control. The stringent scientific government investigation has continued for the past 10 years. The results are now being published, all of which conclude that the evidence is consistent with what Renato Nicolai saw and cannot be explained by other natural causes. In other words, a UFO did land in Transon, Provence.
If you suffer from an inflamed, itchy rash caused by eczema, psoriasis, or other skin irritations, you can get the relief medication formerly available only by doctor's prescription. It's the medicine in maximum strength cortisone 10. Look, cortisone 10 applied to this itchy rash gets under the itch for soothing relief and help and healing. See, the rash is gone. To relieve itchy rashes and skin irritations, use maximum strength cortisone 10 with the medicine doctors recommend most. Available without prescription. Here's your orange juice. You wait here and I'll go get your breakfast. 100% pure Florida quality orange juice. It makes you feel so good. Don't you do that. It kills germs just like it always did. It fights black and the gum disease gingivitis, just like it always did. Now it does one thing it never did. Introducing Cool Mint Blisterine with an exhilarating Cool Minty taste. New Cool Mint Blisterine Antiseptic works like Blisterine, tastes like Cool Mint. Right now, every gallon of paint is on sale at Sears. Every interior, every exterior. Save 10 to 33% on Weather Beater, Easy Living, Dutch Boy, Olympic Stain, and more. But hurry, sale ends Saturday at Sears. You'll be laughing it up Fridays this fall on CBS. We're lining up the Golden Palace, Major Dad, Designing Women, and Bob. Newhart, that is. Fridays this fall. Now share in her Academy Award winning role, along with Olympia Dukakis, Danny Aiello, and D Nicolas Cage. Moonstruck with CBS Friday Movie next. Summer nears its end. Its hottest story begins. I'm gonna make you the biggest name in the business. You wanna play rough? I'll play rough. I would give you anything you wanted. I want you to know that I know the truth about you. August 23rd. The dreams, the passion, the intrigue will all reside at one address. 2000 Malibu Road. This is CBS.